Lloyd's boy or Coy? Lloyd. A friend, anyway, had a, a CNC machine and he made a 30 degree angle sled. Well, that works great with the wood because you need it about this high. But uh, on this, your angle is measured at the base and it's, it's exactly one inch from the other side. So I got my little protractor uh, ruler and I can set it at whatever angle I want. And let me just, you set it at whatever angle and you move it in, move these in and out. And you got it. And I made a couple of rings with me. I was going to bring them with me, and I forgot them. But they turned out perfect. So I'm really happy with. So I'm completely, completely new to this whole thing, and. Uh, I just joined last month, I'm, I'm, and I'm already addicted. I was addicted actually before I came to the first meeting, just watching the videos, but I didn't actually turn anything. I went to Lubbock Retool, and they had a, an old Delta 46700. It was, it was so old, it was still made in the United States. And uh, and, uh, and I got that, and I got it home, and it was working. I had to replace the belt on it, and, uh, and then I started turning, and then um, I came to this meeting, and then after this meeting, I got a little bit more excited, and I went out and I bought uh, a new lathe, much to the chagrin of my wife. She's very upset with y'all. Uh, so uh, I don't have any any, any kind of uh, uh, classes. I'm signed up for the beginner class, though. I did get in on that one for next for starting up. So this is the first thing I turned. It was a mallet. No, it's a piece of red wood off cut. And uh, then I turned a couple little mushrooms out of a cedar branch off cut here. And then uh, I did that with these tools. Uh, I didn't want to pay $400 for the, the turning tools, and I don't know, and I saw as I was watching different YouTube videos, and I did buy a set of Harbor Freight turning tools, but um, I haven't really used them yet, um, but uh, I bought a, a roughing gouge, and then, and then I made these tools from Harbor Freight pry bars, the 24-inch pry bars that you can get for five or six bucks or something like that, and put some carbide tips on them, just cut, cut them off and put a little shelf on here. So, uh, and I got a little level to try to help practice, keep it level, get a little tape to two there. And so there's a square cutter, a square radius cutter, um, a diamond tip, which I guess is sort of like a parting tool on that, and then a, uh, a round cutter for that. So anyway, that's it. Well, you're white. Like he said, no, it wasn't green, it was ringing wet. I rough turned it and made this out of it. It's his piece of mesquite. And this is my hawk bow. Uh, it's a piece of, I'm not sure what, is this cedar elm or cedar oak? Uh, cedar elm. Cedar elm. Okay, well I've been calling it the wrong thing. But uh, on this, it was also wet. There's a product on the market called, you know, somebody had to pronounce it for me. Fina. Polycrill. Uh, take it from me, it will dry it out, but you're going to smell it for six months. Uh, that's the biggest mess I ever got into during the way that some of our older turners do it, rough turn it, put the cuttings back in it, and let it set, by far better. Uh, I'm in the process of building a new shop, so I haven't, but I decided to turn a bunch of these. Jim brought one here a while back, and. Anyway, it fascinated me, so I decided I was going to learn how to do it. I went by his shop, and he showed me the his little ends that what he used. So I made the little cups and started turning these. And then the only bowl I turned this last month was this little uh, mesquite. This mesquite has always got that rotten place in the middle. 
this this one's about half super glue. <laughs> and I'll tell you, if you spray it with the accelerator and you put super glue on it to try to build that rotten stuff back up, be sure and not let any of it rub out on your thumb because when it cures, it burns. He had his, a couple of these spheres. I've always been fascinated with building spheres. It started over 50 years ago. A friend of mine made spheres out of stone. And he made me a couple of jigs and I never did progress any further. So Mark inspired me, and I'm, there's about seven or eight here out of different woods. Uh, I went to YouTube. There's a ton of videos on YouTube that show you the steps and everything you need to know. They make some uh, jigs that start at about 350 bucks, and you make a perfect sphere. Marks are pretty perfect if you roll them in your hand. You don't feel any bumps. You roll mine in your hand and you'll feel bumps because they're not perfect yet. Uh, you can glue wood together, make a segmented sphere, different sizes. I want to make one a little bit bigger, but they're a lot of fun. They're fairly easy. Uh, so I encourage anybody that's interested to go to YouTube, get on there and see how it's done. and. See what you come up with. The bowl is a bowl probably turned 15, 20 years ago out of elm. So I need something to put the spheres in. This is a uh, piece of, uh, uh, depends on who you talk to, it's either common oak, uh, people call it common oak or white oak, but it's in the white oak family. And uh, it's really hard to uh, <coughs> to dry and keep from cracking, but it's great to turn, and it really has a lot of uh, character to it. Uh, the oak, uh, the hard oak does. Red oak uh, is red oak, and it's pretty for cabinet material, but it doesn't make very good turnings. But this makes real good turnings. I've got a whole bunch of small pieces like this. If anybody wants to come to my shop, uh, I've been turn until I'm blue in the face trying to keep it from cracking. So if any of you want, want any, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to have time to turn it off before it starts going bad. So if anybody wants some of it, you come by my shop, I'll get them some of it. Uh, this uh, is She Lays Chinese Lamb. This will go in the, uh, uh, be raffled off for the building fund. Raffle or auction? Raffle for building funds. Uh, this is uh, uh, a mesquite uh, for my cousin in uh, Alpine. Uh, and uh, it has a threaded lid. Uh, Anybody want to try it out now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on up it, you know, if you want to. Turn on it. That's what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> Go for a spin. And uh, but this mesquite uh, is a real challenge here. I've got access to a section of it, but it all has ring shake in it, and it's a nightmare to to deal with the ring shake. That's the only stuff I can get in mesquite that's big enough to to make full-size urns out of uh, has got ring shake in it. And, uh, Mike, you, tell us what that is. What's ring shake? Ring shake is where it gets water and then it doesn't get water forever and then it gets water again. And what happens, ring shake is where the wood separates in the growth rings. It'll start in the pith and it'll go around like a pinwheel. And it will follow the the growth ring, you can see where I've worked on it, where I feel the, feel the ring shake in it, and it's all on the inside. It makes a hollow spot? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that one piece you want to bring. Yes, this is, this is whole log, that's one, that's one, that's one piece. And uh, this tree's probably, you know, 
150, 200 years old. That big in mesquite. But, but uh, uh, you'll get ring shake in a lot of woods uh, and you can deal with it, but uh, it, it's a lot of, a lot of trouble. I've ne I haven't had any problem turning it as far as it trying to separate. Uh, uh, and I know it will uh, if you don't handle it right. But but if you you can stabilize it as you go, and uh, yeah. uh, and uh, but it's a, it, it really leaves some pretty neat looking stuff on it, even though it isn't perfect. Okay, this is Vicky's a piece next. of ash, found wood, a lot of cracks, a lot of, uh, lot of problems. Anyway, it's been on lay for months and months, and I finally dyed it. I think the white wood is, I think it's grapefruit. It wasn't real easy to turn. Anyway, I had a lot of problems with it. I broke my finial, couldn't get my lid off, I had to drill through the back, and of course I was doing this about midnight one night, and Mike wasn't there to solve my problems, so I had to come up with the solution of how we attended to it before, and uh, so I drilled through my chuck to get my lid out with the dowel rod. <laughs> so I got to fill a little hole in the bottom, anyway, and I put a foot on it, so. This is going in the raffle. Uh, it's stop? okay. It's got a great shape. It. It's not the best piece, but I'm tired of looking at it. <laughs> it's the best one I've ever had. And at school, when I needed to get a bunch of kids who were all in 15 different directions, I would ask them to guess how long it would spin, and whoever got it right, I just let them go to lunch early. <laughs> so, man, I had their attention for a while. But a really nice spin top with great big handle. And also want to share with you, once upon a time, the Turner II was in San Angelo. And I went to that. And uh, somebody's lovely wife was sewing these aprons up. And so, if you know a little bit about needle and thread, you know, this is the best one I've had. And I'd like to make it a little longer. But it keeps all the sawdust out of my clothes, and it's lightweight, and so little Velcro. And most of y'all know about Dust Be Gone, but man, you know, never I've never had one of those dust collectors before till this till this group. So I would have this, and then I would have some kids that were too loud, and I'd put that face shield on them, and they'd get real quiet, and that helped out a lot. <laughs> but uh, anyway. that I started. This is a piece of a spalted hackberry. I don't know if that's a piece that Mike and Vicky and I picked up on the side of the road going to the SWAT one year or not. But uh, anyway, so the, I, I finally dug it out and, and, and made a little legend bowl out of it there. Piece of African uh, black wood that I put up here for the knob there to pick the lid off there. Uh, Hackberry grows down on river banks a lot, down where there's a lot of moisture. And uh, like I said, I don't know if we, we, the best part of we picked up a knot there. But anyway, so that, it's been in my, my storage shed there for about a year or so. <laughs> that, that was fun getting that wood too. Because yeah, it, it sure was. was and I sure up messed up a good pair of socks in the mud getting down there. <laughs> <laughs> just, just from pile of, Hackberry was right beside the highway going into the Waco. And uh, we decided to jump the fence and grab something and, and haul. <laughs> that, that was a side I wish we'd had a video of Mike trying to jump over the pole with a big old ball that showed up. That's a like me trying to jump the pole. So, anyway, so that's where that come from. Uh, I did a demonstration on the a uh, long stem goblet there, as we call them, a year or so ago. And uh, somewhere in that, I, I had a piece of coca bolo that I 
that I made a goblet out of there and I'll give me a box of it. So we just put it in the raffle and give it away or whatever it was there. So yesterday I got thinking and Dick Markham would give me a, a piece of coca bowl. And I said, you know, I said, I might ought to make something out of this, you know, if I don't, Dick's feelings are going to be hurting. So anyway, I made this little long stem goblet out of coca bowl. And uh, if you ever turn to one of these long stem goblets, that's, that's fun. But it's quite a challenge though to some people too, but it is for me. So anyway, I just, I just put a seal of finish on this there, but uh, I'm, uh, I think Michael or Dick or one said that, well, you could have, Dick said, he said, you could friction or you could rub it and polish it up. I don't know, that stem was too thin. <laughs>